This week, episode 352 of Stogie Geeks. This is the time of year where historically, even when I own the cigar shop, retailers should really, really get excited. And retailers should also be prepared for the influx of questions and people who have the opportunity to go out there and smoke cigars. We are going to talk about the most sought out list in the premium cigar industry. I'm talking about Cigar Aficionado's top 25 of 2020 has been just announced. The number one stick came out yesterday. They did a revealing for the top 10 going in backwards order. And then today they released the rest of the uh, sticks, uh, 11 through 25. And now today here on Stogie Geeks, we have the opportunity to talk about the top 25 of 2020. It's been a crazy year for the industry. You know we have commentary. And I thought it'd be a great idea to enjoy the number one stick and have some drinks. Stogie Geeks, episode 352 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to episode 352 of Stogie Geeks. I'm your host, Joe Zempa. Today, we get the opportunity to talk about and list Top 25 of 2020 cigars of the list that has been brought out from Cigar Aficionado. In my opinion, it still is the most sought out list here in the industry. Um, from my experience in owning a retail shop, it's also been the week of um, preparing for the influx of some new customers, you know, who come in and want to try and seek out, of course, at least the top five. This was always the uh, time of the year that um, when I owned a retail shop, I would jump in and uh, make sure that we can at least uh, get some product in. Um, with that, it, it's, it was always tough to pivot. Um, and now with technology, it happens so fast, right? So maybe by the time the Stogie Geek listener gets to hear this podcast, um, you might already know what the top 25 is, but at least um, we can uh, have the opportunity to uh, talk about it because no matter what with technology, uh, no matter where it goes with, with video cast, podcasts, etc., uh, website presence, internet presence, Scott Ficionato does have that uh, covered there for sure. So I am going to cut my cigar of the year and celebrate. So if you already know what it is, then you know what I'm smoking, but that will be revealed uh, as well. And I want to talk about some commentary and have some drink uh, there, and we'll uh, talk about that 
uh, they are Stogie Geeks. Uh, email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Uh, if you have any thoughts and, and commentary, uh, either during the show or after the show, um, you know, uh, about the list, right? I still get excited for the list. I mean, you know, uh, having my background in television and radio, I'm still a sucker for countdowns. You know, when they do the top 100 countdowns of, you know, 2020 or whatever the year is and all of that, I, st I still tune in. Uh, I don't know. I think it's fascinating. Um, you know, and it's also a good gauge if you go and look um, back, uh, you know, in previous years. And, you know, you can kind of see, like, which, which companies hang around and which companies have uh, came in hot and heavy and which other companies um, that, you know, uh, have shown either progression or, 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 or degression, right, uh, there too. So uh, super cool. And uh, without further ado... Um, I'm not, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Hold on. Okay. Um, I think, I think I'll count backwards from, uh, 10 to one and then reveal, uh, 11 through. I don't know. I think it would be, uh, that's the way it's going to go down. So, uh, again, cigar aficionados, top cigars of 2020. Uh, what can we say about 2020, right? When I ended the show last calendar year, uh, we reflected on what 2020 has been. Uh, some shops have been closed. Uh, they were obviously closed for the initial 90 days of the pandemic hitting. There's been a lot of, uh, um, you know, a, a drama surrounding that. Some states are under restriction. Um, you know, the business restrictions and all of that, they're semi-open. They're not open fully they obviously can't operate under capacity. So it's been a really crazy year, not only for the retailers, but it's also been a crazy year for the manufacturers, right? They were shut down for a little bit. I've often said that when it comes to inventory, we're going to feel those effects here in Q4, which we have. There's been some inventory stuff and back orders there. Um, but I think they managed to um, put out a, a really good list this year. And... Um, to be fully candid, I'm very impressed with this year's selections uh, over, over last year's. Uh, we do this every year here on Stogie Geeks, at least since I've been here. Um, so uh, for the past uh, three years, we've uh, at least took the opportunity to review. So uh, I think it's cool. It's super cool. Uh, and again, you get a chance to, to gauge. Number 10 was the Henry Clay... Warhawk Corona. Now, I I enjoy the Henry Clay's, right? Super old brand. Been around for a while. Um, a big online presence, you know? Uh, so, what what can you say about that? Like, in regards to the retailers, th they might not really carry some of those, but... Uh, it's rated number 10. It's super tasty. You can still find some super tasty stuff online for sure. Uh, that was the uh, Henry Clay Warhawk Corona. Uh, number nine. I, I was introduced to this stick probably it was fall. So I'm going to go with uh, late September. The Rocky Patel number six Corona. Um I went to a shop and saw it lying around. It was a relatively new, uh, newer shop here, and I saw it lying around. I was like, ah, I don't know, you know. And to be quite candid, I had the decade first. Um, I'm a sucker for the decade. I I really like that stick. Uh, it's been in the in 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 the mix too for for a while here on the list. And when I had this stick, I was pretty impressed. Uh, I believe I spoke about it on Sticks of the Week segment here on Story Geeks. If I didn't, uh, I'll go back and check and rekindle my notes and do a review for sure. Uh, that was Rocky Patel number six Corona. I like it in, in within that actual size as well. They do have a Robusto and Toro size. I, I'm again, I'm I'm a fan of of, of the the uh, smaller sizes. I think you get a little bit more flavor from that. So that was what I went with. Number eight was the, to no surprise, um, 
was the Oliva Series V Milanio. Uh, actual size there was Churchill. Again, I like the smaller size, but Oliva's been around, right? Uh, the, when we go back right quick and just n rattle off the 2019 sticks, you know they're going to be in the mix for sure. Number seven, Alec Bradley Gatekeeper Robusto. Super fan um, of what Alec and Bradley uh, have came up with, right? Gatekeeper. Remember, just for you story geeks who are kind of listening, uh, there you have Alec Bradley, and then when you have the Alec and then the ampersand Bradley, uh, those are from the uh, sons, Alec and Bradley, uh, there for, for uh, from the founder, from Alan Rubin over at Alec Bradley Cigar Company. They've come out with some super cool sticks. Gatekeeper was was the first one. I'm sorry. It was Blind Faith. Then you had Gatekeeper. Uh, they recently came out with, with the Kintsugi uh, there, too. I'm a, a fan of the uh, Kintsugi and the Blind Faith. I actually have a box of those sitting right here in Stoey Geek's uh, G-Unit Studios. It's a pretty good go-to stick for sure. The number six was the Hoya de Nicaragua Numero Umbo La Ambassador. That is an awesome stick. Story Geeks, you could try a Hoya de Nicaragua in the regular line. They can be a little bit um, strong. Th they are ranked medium to full. However, the, the this, num this Numero Uno, it's, it's like they spent very close attention to detail with the blending with this stick. Uh, I know there's a couple shops here in the Northeast that do carry it, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. For you Story Geeks listeners, um, that was number six, the Hoyo de Nicaragua Numero Uno. Number five is the uh, Punch, Short the Punch. I mean, Punch has been around forever right they've always been around uh, at least since i've even dabbled in this industry that they're, they're always a uh, player uh however the uh punch short the punch within this particular stick uh is a cuban right so uh, obviously we know some of the restrictions that are there but you know you gotta remember scott aficionado does not just operate here in the in the great old US of A, uh, it operates um, worldwide, and to no surprise, uh, there's obviously some some Cubans that get up there within the uh, at least top five or top ten. There were a little bit more last year too, and and we'll find that out. Um, number four was the La Mission L'Atelier, 1959. Again, this stick has been on a shelf for a while, right? At least five years off the top of my head that I know of. Um, definitely, it's it's one of those like quiet sticks. There, uh, I think retailers um, should, should should work a little harder to uh, turn their um, customers uh, on to exploring. They also have uh, other. La Mission's La Tellier's that, that are out there with other years. Those are not um, bad at all, but that 1959 is uh, super tasty. It's a box press. We all know how I, at least I feel about box presses, right? I kind of shy away from them, but, um, you know, uh, y y you can get into that stick. It's readily available, and uh, that was the number four stick. Number three, again, I, I, I couldn't agree with, with this list more, right? Uh, number three, Padron 1964 uh, The it, It's an awesome stick. The anniversary stick is, is just a classic staple. Plenty of reviews if you go to stogiegeeks.com on this stick, uh, either by myself or previous host makes a great gift you cannot go wrong uh i used to smoke this stick a lot until uh paul turned me on 
to the uh, 40th anniversary, uh, which is a, a slightly more expensive. And that is a super cool stick. So if you ever want to treat yourself, uh, get a Patron uh, 40 anniversary. But the 1964 anniversary was number three. Number two. Arturo Fluente, the Fluente Fluente Opus X Double Robusto. Absolutely, positively cannot go wrong with that stick there. Again, sought after, makes a great gift. If you look at the label, there's a whole story about all of the different crest and shields and colors and everything in the label there from Arturo Fuente. There's a whole story to be told there. Um, and you certainly should go and seek out some Opus Xs. You will treat yourself. They are slightly expensive for you new Stogie Geeks listeners, but um, you won't be disappointed for sure with that number two stick. And the number one stick, uh, I will break down the stick first. And then I will uh, tell you. So we're going to get into what I'm smoking right now. And and then we, we will uh, do that. First of all, the good news is it's not a Cuban. So that's good. And second good news is they're in regular production. So that's good. Right. Um, the wrapper binder filler. The wrapper is a Connecticut Habano. It's uh, from Connecticut, Connecticut, so, so it's from the USA, right? Uh, it's not saying Connecticut representing the lighter shade, right? So you got a Connecticut Habano. Um, the binder is, is from Ecuador, and the filler is Nicaraguan, to no surprise, right? Uh, there. It's, um, I'm smoking the, it's the Pledge prequel by EP Carrillo, and it is the number one stick. I think it's a f good choice. I think it's it's a it's a super tasty choice. Has some strength, but I think it's a really a cigar for everybody. Which might bring us to some commentary at the end uh, there too, right? Um, as far as the process, but the EP Carrillo uh, Pledge Prequel is the number one stick again. Filler is Nicaraguan, binder is is from Ecuador, wrapper is a Connecticut Habano. I'm smoking it. The ring gauge is a 50. This stick came out uh, around fall of 2020, right? So now it's pretty new on the scene, but if your local retailer carries uh, EP Carrillo, well, I'm sure they will have this now. And if not, I'm sure that they will uh, get it now. And to no surprise, we've interviewed Ernesto Perez here on the show. Um, you know, talks about the blending process. They're, they're very particular with that, just like Manuel and Noah. Very, very, very careful with the blending, making sure it's balanced. They've had a track record when we go back. I mean, you know, uh, EP Creel has been in the uh, top five or three. Uh, within the past uh, three years, so that 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 says something as well. Uh, this cigar really is a cigar for for, for everyone, right? Um, it's it's kind of got like a soft box press shaped, right? So you know it's 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 that it's that slightly box press, which I kind of like because I'm I'm a twirler, right? Anyway, um, you get black pepper and spice right on the tongue. Right, right away. As soon as you, it, it, it's there. But when you're about an inch or two in, it really settles in. Right, you're gonna get um, some some super cool wood notes out of it. Right, it 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 uh, it starts out pretty mild, other than the pepper, if that makes sense. Right, you get that kind of un, that initial pepper blast, but it starts out pretty mild um, there. It I did a, a V cut, of course. Um, you know, it it's the cut does make the difference. Um, with my new little fancy cutter, sometimes I I've been doing like a guillotine. There, I, I kind of like to stick the knife and and do the V cut. Still, I, I think you, you it it gets more of a uh, build up. Um, 
and to me like the 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 smoke production coming at least the flume coming in into the palate is just a little bit more concentrated for me that's just me you get notes of a leather for sure especially towards the end um and you're gonna get kind of like a like like a a toasty hay but with a an an espresso flavor but to me it's kind of not it, it's not like a um a sweet flavor it's kind of like like almost like a, a bitter flavor and i and i think that that's the uh contrast with the pepper black pepper on the retro hail construction what can you what, what what can you say with the uh flat box press uh super, super impressive sticks uh it it's available in two different sizes um, you have the 5x50, which is what I'm smoking. Uh, they come in boxes of 10, just so you know. And then um, if you were to go with the bigger size, the 6x52, although that one was not the rated stick of, of the uh, year, but at least you can get the blend, mess around with it. They have a 6x52. I've had both. Again, I like the smaller stick. Super cool very tasty can't go wrong now my, my question out there for the retailers is probably probably pretty simple right um if you didn't carry ep carrillo my my, my statement would be why not they, they've been rated uh with within the top three for the past couple of years now consistently um they're they have to move. Their price point is good. It's, it's not like an Opus X or a Davidoff or a Padrona Anniversary. So, you know, so, something to think about. Uh, and I remember, again, when we had the shop, if we were to, if we were to rewind back, um, what are we, 20, no, uh, 14 years ago, it'd be like, oh, wow, uh, we got to get our hands on these. And, um, you know, I think... If they wanted to accomplish that goal, they can do that with the EP Carrillo Pledge. They could do that with the La Mission, La Tellier. They could do that certainly with the uh, Gatekeeper and the Oliva V Milanio, uh, Rocky Patel. And so there's a lot of, of, of good sticks that are really, really concentrated within that top 10 uh, for sure. Want to go quick uh, just to keep uh, kind of continuity of the show uh for those of you who are listening uh as opposed to watching um if you look at the uh 2019 list of cigars uh certainly it tells a uh different story for sure and we are going to get to that in a couple of seconds hold on Come on, squirrel. Internet's, uh, internet's running a little bit slow today. All right? So, um, here we go. So, the top 10, I'm just going to do the top 10 of, uh, in order from 1 to 10. In order, just to recap, so it's fresh in our minds. Uh, this is the uh, Cigar Aficionados 2019 list. You have the, the the number one stick was the Agent Room Quattro Nicaraguan. I was kind of like, eh, very shocked that that was picked for, 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 for number one, for sure. Um, number two was the Padron Series 1926, number six. See where we're going here. Uh, number three was the Warped uh, Siri Grand Reserver 1988 Robusto. I was like, what? That's, that's that, you know, would have never saw that happening. Uh, number four was the Cohiba Robusto. Um, again, Cuban version. So, okay. Uh, number five was the Rocky Patel ALR Second Edition Toro, which is pretty cool stick, but I wasn't like crazy about it. Um, number six was the Oliva Series V Lancero. So again, Oliva hanging in that mix for sure. Number seven, the 
Illusion uh, FNA 10th anniversary. Again, I think that's a great stick. Very, very cool rating. This one I was shocked. The Altura Fluente for number eight, again, 2019. Altura Fluente Opus X Re Reserva de Chateau, number eight, really? I thought that, 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 that certainly should have been higher. Number nine, Tatuaje uh, Nuvitas, number one. Okay, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. And number 10 was the uh, H. Upman 175th anniversary Churchill. So that was your top 10. Looking at the rest of them of 2019, the Espinosa number four Habano, I thought sh should have probably scored higher, came in at 11. Uh, the LFD, the, the La Flora Dominicana double La Hero Lancero, came in at number 12. Placencia, Elma de Fuego, 13. And you have a, a Cuban came in at number 14, the Juan Lopez Selection, number two. Then you have Laroma de Cuba, Punch, and Jorge de Monterey, and, and the list goes on there for uh, 2019. So, um, you know, it, it the list is kind of like, you know, it is what it is. That's where we're at, right? Uh, but this year's, just to do a quick recap, right, before I reveal the rest there, like the EP uh, Carrillo uh, Pledge, super cool stick. Very, very tasty, in-depth taste as well. So, um, yeah, it, uh, it, you know, Opus X, obviously. Padron, obviously, right? La Mission, didn't see that coming. That was a sign, that's been there for a while, and then and and then you know it crept up. Then you throw in a Cuban, Hoy de Nicaragua, Numero Uno. Okay, cool. Uh, Alec Bradley, Gatekeeper. Again, surprise, super cool. C congrats to uh, Alec and Bradley for 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 putting that in, in into the mix there. The Oliva Series V again. Oliva, they're in there. Rocky Patel, number six, uh, and then your Henry Clay. Um, Warhawk, which, you know, makes some online stuff, but whichever. So that was the top 10. I think it's a little bit more solid this year. Before I go through uh, 11 through 25, they have a process uh, on their site. Uh, if you go to, to cigarfishnado.com and click on top 25, I'm sure it's, it's all over the front page. Um, they have a four-step process, right? First of all, they take all of the ratings that have um, had that had scored the highest over the past year and assemble them together. So, so these are the ones that have had the highest ratings uh, all all of the year round. Then they uh, go out and they uh, have them unbanded um, so that the tasters don't know uh, what the particular size is. Uh, again. Right, some of the you know some of the like, what was it? Not last year in 2018, like the the LFD uh, Artesian Bowl, right? Like that's like you 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 can guess it what it is. It's so unique, but anyway, that's the process. Step three, um, all the the top scoring uh, cigars are now uh, smoked, and then they kind of battle each other uh, through multiple rounds. Which I think that that process um, is 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 has been improved there uh, from their panel, right? Uh, and I think from that, that's how we got to such a a a, in my opinion, a more defined list this year, right? And what I mean by defined, it's like, oh yeah, I can see where you know a taster who is doing blind taste test can really appreciate the flavor of what that was uh for sure and the uh again the new list of top 25 is assembled and that is their uh four step process i like the process uh i think again that critical step in number three having them uh go against each other um you know if not to get all political 
but kind of works that way in in a political system, right? You have a primary where you vote for some multiple candidates, and then the winners from that pool now get a chance to battle each other and then go, and then it's it's all assembled. So um, who knows? Maybe they read the Constitution. I don't know. All right. Uh, so we're going to finish out this list here, and uh, I'm going to continue to enjoy my... Um, E.P. Carrillo pledge and um, scotch whiskey. It's definitely uh, good for the soul. Uh, number 11. Uh, this, qu- th- this exact stick comes up in my top three when um, either Stogie Geek listeners or uh, friends or people in a cigar shop and you start talking about cigars and whatnot. What are your favorite Cubans? Um, I've often said Monte Cristo number two is my favorite Cuban. Uh, I toggle back and forth between the number 11 stick and um, another stick when it comes to Cuban, but the Boulevard Bellicoso Fino, I mean, super cool stick. If you have any friends that travel, you get your hands on some. They are really, really super tasty. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Anyway, the number 11 is the Boulevard Bellicoso Fino. Uh, number 12, uh, Ashton Virgin Sun Grown Sorcerer. Um, so it's the Ashton uh, VSG, as we uh, usually uh, say on the streets, right? Um, I agree. Kind of agree, but the ESG VSG, my palette for probably eight years, they end the same for me, right? Uh, they, they they start out and it's like yes, yes, yeah, and then they kind of just end the same for me. Um, but anyway, uh, if if I were a uh, participating in the taste, um. Voting round, I would know I'm smoking an Ashton. Uh, a a a Ashton. If you put five cigars in front of me, or ten, or twenty, and I and I took twenty days to make that the first stick of the day, so that my palate is fresh, I could probably, with ninety four percent certainty, say that's the Ashton for sure. Uh, again, that's just how my brain works. Palate, what I remember. There you go. Um, Number 13, I thought it would score a little bit higher. The Warzone Robusto. This is an awesome stick. Um, I had this stick. Uh, I I knew where I was. It was given to me and says, hey, this is coming out like in two weeks or whichever. Let me know what you think. And I was like, holy cow, this is a really, really good stick. Um, that's by uh, Espinosa. So... Um, here in the Northeast, you can um, see the crazy rep, Nick Goss. Get your hands on some if you are a retailer uh, there for sure. But the Warzone Robusto, again, I, I'm, I've am i expressed uh, excitement about the Espinosa line. I like the Laranja. I like the Warzone. Certainly like the Comfortably Numb. I know they're all different sticks, so I don't need any hate email saying, what do you mean? They're all different. I know they're all different. And sometimes you feel like Oreos and sometimes you feel like Chips Ahoy, right? So that's what the that, that that's what the greatness is uh, about, number one, this industry, and number two, experimenting with, with, with brands and blends. And um, when I uh, don't have to review a stick and I go into a shop, I judge it by how I'm feeling that day. You know, what I want and how I think it's going to be on my uh, palate. Or if it's new and I'm just dying to try it. So there you go. Uh, anyway, the Warzone Robusto was number uh, 13. Number 14, Casa Torrent 1973 Torpedo. I've had multiple Casa Torrents. I have not had this one yet. I have not seen it anywhere in my travels. However, my travels have been very limited this year, um, not having uh, had the chance to uh, go down to either Hilton Head, Miami, or upstate New York, trying to uh, stay safe. 
especially with the little guy at home. So uh, I will seek that out. I know last year I had like three or four that I went and 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 I seeked out. Um, this is the first one off off the list that I um, let me just review, make sure I'm speaking with integrity. Um, yep, 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 mm, 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 yep. The, so it took fourteen for uh, top fourteen for me not to have even had any experience with that so uh i will make notes to get back and uh at least grab myself at least a five pack and do a future review on that laroma uh number 15 laroma de cuba edition a special number one yes yes take some have some um old school stick classic classic taste you won't be disappointed uh, number 16, La Vida, Vida Gesta, N- have not even had that, uh, it's been on my radar, uh, to, uh, seek this out, uh, I don't know if I'm going on a unicorn mission, uh, thus far, uh, if any, uh, Stogie Geeks listeners have them and want to trade, uh, it would make my life easier. Uh, to uh, do that, especially as we are in COVID times. That's the La Vida Vida Gesta. Uh, or the Casa Turin, uh Series 1973 Torpedo. If you have that one, uh, feel free to email me at joehat at stogiegeeks.com. Uh, Camacho, usually in the mix. Um, been kind of silent in 2019. Um, but anyway, the Camacho Nicaragua Robusto. Again, in my opinion, I say classic. It's like mini classic, right? It's probably, uh, you know, um, six years old classic, right? Um, always been in the mix. Camacho's there for sure. Um, the Fonseca, um, I'm sorry, number 18. Well, wait, wait, let me stop. 17 was the uh, Camacho Nicaragua Robusto. Number 18 is the Fonseca by my father, Petit Corona. Interesting what they, um, interesting how these are being rolled out into some of the shops, right? Um, some of the feedback that I'm getting from at least the customer side is, well, they're different from Fonse. Well, yes, yes, they are. And, and that's just the way it works, right? Uh, when a company is acquired, things get different. Um, but again, um, good stick, a L- little mild for my taste uh, there, but um, I definitely would, would, would give it a good rating for sure. Um, number 19, Placencia Cosecha 146 La Vega. Let me tell you something. We did a whole rollout in 2019. Um, no, I'm sorry. In 2020 uh, here on Story Geeks where we've taken the time, either myself or or another Stogie Geek host had uh, re- reviewed all of the lines from Placencia. My Placencia notes are there. Go to stogiegeeks.com, click on Stogies. You can see that. Often said that that is my favorite of the line. I've spent multiple episodes talking about this stick. Comes from the 146th Harvest. You get a uh, uh, deep, deep, um, uh, dense smoke out of it, flavor for days pepper, everything a cigar smoker would want from a medium to full stick uh, there. And even if you wanted to, uh, even if you were new and, 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 and you had something to eat, definitely a good stick there. A little bit surprised that that, that didn't get a, a, a uh, slightly higher rating uh, there, but hey, right? Um, number 20, uh, Four Kicks, Kappa Especial Robusto, super fan of Four Kicks, um... You know, uh, uh, super fan of uh, Crowned Heads. Uh, spoke about that again here on Stoey Geeks. Uh, probably not multiple, but certainly slightly lower than multiple times uh, there. But yeah, four kicks. Uh, blended. Um, not too, too uh, spicy, but very smooth. Blended well. I think that you would thoroughly enjoy that. Had that one as well. Uh, High Clear Castle, uh, Victorian Toro, came in at number 21. Um, 
I thought that that would score a little bit higher, especially when you, at least in top 10, especially when you start getting into um, some of the lighter brands that historically have made the higher numbers. And we'll do a quick recap of that uh, flavor profile, uh, in my opinion, of the top 25 of this year and last, right before we wrap up. Um, number 22 is... Uh, the Romeo and Julieta Reserva Real Nicaraguan Toro. Now, this is interesting, right? Because, you know, Romeo and Julieta, historically known for the for being uh, from the region, from from they are Dominican cigars. They've dabbled into the um, the Nicaraguan. Um, using Nicaraguan tobacco, uh, and, 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 you know, we've often talked about that where the classic facings are, uh, who were known from either being from Honduran or Nicaragua, who are now trying to, um, get into that market share from a business perspective and do that. And Romeo and Julieta has, has really been all over the map with, with, um, getting into that you know some sticks are good some sticks some sticks uh haven't done well uh they've done a collaboration which i think is doing uh okay right um i have to get out there and speak to some more retailers that i've not actually had this stick and the only reason why is just to, to shy away from romeo and Juliet's first crack at crossing that nicaraguan um, blending uh, series. I've had the collaboration one. Uh, it's okay. Uh, Stogie Geek Raiden. I'd probably, I, I, I'd probably give it a try one, right? Um, because it, it's kind of like if you're smoking the, the La Aurora, right? And um, let's go with the 107 or the 115, right? Two completely different smokes. Uh, from the Dominican Republic, right? La Aurora has been around since what, 1903. Uh, well known from from that. Then Manuel No blends this Nicaraguan blend, and I've I've had mixed emotions from not me, from uh, consumers about this. Like, ah, I really don't like it. Like, you know, it doesn't taste like La Aurora. I'm like, it's not supposed to. It's from a different region. But the fact that the blender has made it ultra smooth. And has made it be able to coexist within its profile, I think, is, is a phenomenal feat. Because the characteristics of Nicar Nicaraguan tobacco, as well as um, Dominican to to uh, tobacco and Honduran, right, uh, are extremely different, right? They're very, very different characteristic-wise. Um, and, you know, if, if you've been smoking cigars for a while... Um, when I say a while, doesn't really matter as long as you're taking notes. You should be able to identify at least that region of, hey, I really think that this is a Nicaraguan or I really think that this is a Dominican. To me, um, there's a sweetness that comes with the Nicaraguan and the uh, spicy uh, pepper, pepper blast, um, you know, white pepper. Usually is a flag for me to say, okay, this is um, within, not only is it in my wheelhouse, uh, but I kind of gravitate towards that. And and not only do I do that, but other um, listeners and consumers do that as well. Because clearly there has been a Nicaraguan movement when you look at uh, creativity of cigars and doing that. And if you didn't believe me or any other podcast or any other magazine, all you got to do is go back to the number 22 stick, the Romeo and Julieta Reserva Real Nicaraguan Toro, right? If they've been dealing with, with, with their blend for uh, well over 100 years, and now all of a sudden, hey, let's, let, let's start to experiment with, with this type of stuff there too. Same thing with La Aurora, same thing with, with other companies. So uh, hats off to... Uh, what they're doing over there in Nicaragua. Uh, it's super cool. And they, they keep pushing the blends. Um, and and there's t 
tons of sensation to be had uh, when you're experimenting with with uh, tobacco for sure. Anyway, a couple more left. Uh, num number twenty three. Uh, old school uh, La Flor Dominicana uh, 1994 Mambo um, Go for it Classic, classic stick uh, There I, 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 I kind of agree with, the, with, with, with that number wise Right, it's been a while But when you're looking at that stick Compared to say An Oliva An, an Oliva V Been around for a while as well But Oliva V kind of gets those kind of top top 10 ratings uh just something to think about right point made i don't know i'm not too sure i think i made my point be better on number 22 anyway number 24 uh wouldn't be a countdown if we didn't if we didn't talk about drew right uh herrera esteli miami short corona gorda this is a great stick now um for you story geeks listeners who are watching and listening um, Herrera Esteli, they have all different color labels. This is the black label, right? It's it's it's, it's the Miami uh, version. So you got the Her Herrera Esteli Miami Short Corona Gorda. Go and get these, all right? I've had these when they were being introduced when they came out to a retailer, and they're like, "What do you think?" And I was like, "Yeah, you should bring these in. That they're, they're, they're super tasty, very very tasty. Um, complex when it comes to flavor." But not spice. Hope that makes sense. Uh, and uh, number 25, I have had, but not this version, right? Uh, it is a Cuban. It is the Ramon Alonez, Alonez. Number two, Edition Limitada nine, uh, 2019. I will repeat that. The Ramon Alonez, Alonez. Number two, Edition Limitada 2019. And that wraps up your uh top 25 of the year for 2020 looking at the profiles right right quick uh i said i would mention that right before we uh take off right so i'm in uh 2019 now right looking at the profile here uh of of just the top um say 15 right Placencia is in there uh la roma de cuba you know, you you've had some some, I guess you could say, not so stapled, but really tasty cigars in the mix. Uh, what I mean by that, ju just picking them out. Uh, the warped uh, number three, the Rocky Patel. Um, you know, I'm not going to be cliche and talk about the uh, Padron and Fuentes, right? The Tatuaje. Illusion, uh, maybe go with with the V, and definitely the Espinosa Habano and the Placencia Elma de Fuego. All right, it, it seemed like they the, in, in 2019 they were they were shooting for um, a little bit of spice, right? Uh, seems if, if if I were to categorize the year, um, the tasters. Uh, go for a little bit of spice and a um, little bit of pep in the cigar right there. And then if you look at your uh, 2020 list, right, I think they went for balance as opposed to like crazy strength and um, spice. And what I mean by that is like E.P. Carrillo, balance stick. Obviously, Fl Fluente and Padron, balance stick. La Mission, L'Atelier, balance stick, um, uh, punch, short, short to punch, right? Um, Yo Hoyo de Nicaragua. Even when I was going back, if you were to rewind this, you don't have to. If you were to rewind this, I'm like, balanced, it's balanced, it's balanced. Um, tastes good. You can notice a transition from going through the sticks as opposed to if you look at the 2019 list, it was like, ooh, like which one kind of has like a little bit of pop or a little bit of sizzle or a little bit of a unique spice and whatnot. Wonder if it's the same panel, right? Uh, th there too. Um, you know, even if you get lower uh, within the ranking, say 15 through 25, right? I mean, I only haven't had the Casa Turin and the La Vida, La Vida Jester, but again, that Cosecha. 146 by Placencia, balanced. Fonseca, my father, Petit Corona, 
balanced. Uh, high clear castle, balanced. Think I made my point? I certainly hope so. Um, there you go. I will tell you that um, very excited with some of the things that are coming out here for Stogie Geeks uh, in 20, uh, what year are we in? 2021, right? I swear, ever since I had a kid, I've, I've lost track of the years. I just, you know, do that. But anyway, I'm starting my fourth year here at Story Geeks. It's a privilege and an honor to be here. Thank you to Paul and the staff, Johnny and Gustavo, for always making this happen and uh, for obviously driving the bus that we all like to be on. Super thank you to the Story Geeks listeners. Uh, I want to invite you. Uh, any comments on this list, uh, certainly uh, don't hesitate to email me at uh, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Would love to hear from you. Would love to hear if you've uh, tried any of these sticks. Uh, if you want my opinion in, in, in a little bit more uh, in depth, uh, you, you know, I will certainly uh, give it to you for sure. Uh, if you want to share anything, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. Visit us at stogiegeeks.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram. Um, there, I want to remind you that behind every cigar is a story worth knowing. Get out there and shop local. I'm going to finish my cigar and drinks and probably have a couple more drinks. Story Geeks, we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>